welcome back. Um, so yeah, I got to play a chess game against our uh, ladies pro shogi player, uh, Shogi Harbor. Um, yeah, I thought this was an interesting game. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to play competitive game. Like my last series of competitive games was last Wednesday or something when my chess club decided just to hold a tournament. But typically we do blitz games, so it's also been a while since I played rapid games. Um, I think the last time I did a rapid game or slower was the Lee Chess Classical tournament, which is a couple months ago. Almost all my chess lately has been blitz. So, um, yeah, I think I should take some time and do some post-game analysis here. Either with or without the engine, I don't really care. Um... So, oh, I could also show the opening book. So, yeah, here I am uh, attempting to play Benoni. Um, so, or I'm sorry, actually I was aiming to play a Benko, which I thought could have been interesting. Um, anyway, that's one way things could have gone, but instead we see this interesting transposition. Um, and, yeah. Obviously, I could have played knight f6 here. We could have seen some uncharted territory as far as my openings go. But I saw a possibility to transpose into a familiar setup, so we went for that. For the uninitiated, the reason this fails is this. I thought this would be valuable and amusing to point out during the game. So that's why I did knight f6 here. Yeah, our Shogi Master had no challenge figuring this out. Um, it also played a reasonable defensive move, and suddenly we're playing a dragon. Isn't this fun? Um, yeah, this is an opening I've studied a bit with both sides, read games by masters, etc., etc. Yeah, I've, obviously this... Uh, well, it's funny, at the high school level... Um, I used to read a bit about this, because uh, I would play Open Sicilian as white all the time. So, um, yeah. Here I faced a decision, like, do I pin the knight? Oh, I'm sorry, here maybe I, sh I should comment. So, like, there's all these moves in the Masters database, but we don't have to play the Master moves. Like, this is the Dragon Sicilian. This is extremely sharp stuff. And you're going to get burned if you misplay it. So, knight f3 is entirely respectable. It's more common in lines where black has played e5, but um, it's okay to concede a move in order to solidify the position a bit and get something that is workable. Because this was very quickly accelerating into something very dangerous. So, yeah, it makes sense. Um, Makes sense to play a little uh, reasonable move here. Uh, so I was faced with a dilemma, like, I hadn't seen this knight f3 before. Uh, so being that this is like my secondary tournament weapon, not my primary weapon, and I haven't studied every variation in particular, this particular thing had surprised me a little bit. Um, just because, like, there's an infinite amount of this to study. It's not even fair. I was forced into this situation where I suddenly have tons of candidate moves. Um, like, here's a candidate. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Um, bishop d7 is reasonable. e6, a6. I did think about b6. It's probably not a candidate h6 is probably best. Um, rook e8, rook b8. Maybe even king h8. Like, there's candidates here for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of stuff to consider. I ultimately settled on bishop d7, but possibly this could have been interesting. Um, the move many players would have chosen here is bishop g4, but I didn't see a good continuation after this. Like, I considered knight d4 or knight e5. I didn't really like this. So, 
And then I backed up and considered, well, do I have to take the knight? Like, maybe I play this way. In Blitz, I do this kind of nonsense all the time, but here, this is there's a hard counter to it. And I don't really have a way to keep up the nonsense. So, since this isn't Blitz, uh, we're not going to play this crazy stuff. Um, it just doesn't work. Uh, so instead I play my best, I just develop a piece, but h6 is probably asking white, like, what are you intending? This probably is the right timing for h6. I think I just forgot to consider that here. Like, there were other positions where I considered it. I think after here I considered h6, and I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of scared. Um... Just given the super active position of all white's pieces and the ability to push f4 at a moment's notice, and g6 being a bit loose, I'm like, uh, here I couldn't really think about h6. Here h6 is probably pretty reasonable, because you have to move the knight to get the pawn to move. Um, anyway, so we end up with queen d2. Again, well, queen d2 stops my h6 idea. So... Yeah, and then I had to, like, readjust. Because White's plan's kind of uh, straightforward. Just develop the pieces and attack. And, again, this isn't my primary tournament weapon, so I don't know everything about it. But, um, yeah, I saw several lines where if my queen moves away, uh, potentially e7 becomes weak. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the other point I saw was that bishop h6 is threatened, or this would be a pin. And usually there's some counterbalancing force that black has, and some sort of counterattack. But I wanted to see this madness. I, like, I wanted to play this, in some sense. Um, because this is sharp. And in, like games where there isn't money on the line or some significant prize or something like that. This is just a online game. I want to play the sharp stuff. Uh, I think this is fine for black, um, despite being pretty scary. Um, so, like, if I move this and this away, bad stuff happens on f7. But I think I'm fine here. I don't know. And it's not like white has to play this immediately. Like, this is a good developing move. There are plenty of good developing moves here. Um, so again, I'm angling to try to get a sharp position. And yeah, this is an unfortunate loss of a pawn. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, obviously this position is tense. Obviously you don't want to give up the pawn, but um, losing it actually isn't that bad here. Because, like, my king is a bit more exposed than white's king is, and I've not advanced anything on my queen side, so a pawn, it makes some difference, but there's a lot of things that are important here. Uh, yeah, this is where things got crazy. This is the insanity I was aiming for. So, like, the pawn itself might not be that significant, but my overarching idea of, like, tripling on this knight, pinning it to the queen, maybe having a tactic here, like, this notion of bringing the queen out to attack stuff, and then the queen becomes even more active over here, um, that's maybe what hurts the most about this. Other than the psychological damage of, hey, I thought I had something here and suddenly it's not there anymore. Like, if this knight were back on b8, b8, then, yeah, the, I could see e5 and suddenly I'm in trouble. Um, but thankfully I have this square covered. Uh, what more is there? So yeah, I survived the attack, and then now it's my turn to attack, and I got fancy. Um, although I did consider this. Is there more to this than what I considered? I wonder. Uh, I want 
there to be some amazing tactic here. There just isn't, is there? Maybe my knight g4 is mistimed. Like, during the game I thought about this. And note, if bishop takes bishop, I could move the rook. I guess here. And I guess this could happen. Um, yeah, this actually is not that great. Um, so bishop takes bishop. Is there some way I could continue some attack here? Because that'd be fun. No, I don't quite have an attack. So like this sort of thing. Obviously if takes, I have this. But um, more importantly, if this capture happens, then like, I can't move my knight away and attack stuff, so, yeah, let's see, yeah, bishop, oh, hang on, I was about to agree with you, but this actually doesn't simplify anything, um, the way I played it resulted in a simplification, I wasn't too thrilled about it, but just, well, I'm sorry, my bishop h6 is a practical simplification, because by this point, like, my knight's in a weird position. Uh, but this bishop h6 doesn't necessarily simplify things. I could have actually made things more complicated. This is the fun I was looking for. Then I could play stuff like this, and this, and maybe even take here, and I don't know, like, my rook comes out. This could have been fun. Um... So yeah, when you're studying a win, uh, often you don't think about, like, what are all the things I missed. But yeah, this could have been fun. Earlier in the game I thought of this, but yeah. Now regardless, what I actually played was good, but it was just not fun. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. This is playable, and I'm just up a pawn, but where's the fun in this? Like, Stockfish needs a switch here, where you just say, like, give me the most fun position. Let's just tune it to give you exciting... Well, actually, there is some thing... I forget if this is in the stock... No. This, somebody had suggested that Stockfish could have a way to analyze the complexity of a position. I forget whether this was something ultimately targeted for Stockfish or for Lee Chess, but I agreed. And I submitted a patch to that developer asking them... Uh, I forget. But they, like, ignored my patch for a month, and so now I'm not working on the complexity thing anymore, but might eventually turn back to it, because complexity is kind of fun. Yeah, Leela Stein? Is that some derivative of Leela? I suppose. That's pretty cool if it is. Um, also, I see that Stockfish is starting... Uh, or Some enthusiasts have been making it um, more and more neural network compatible. I'm doing a lot of changes related to that. And so eventually, someday, it might be possible to load evaluation grids um, or files that have been pre-tuned. So that is exciting. Um, that way you could maybe have chess personalities, where you have one that just prefers complex positions and stuff. All right, so I sped through this. Okay, this was the forced combination or forcing combination. This, this is clever. So I've been stating, yeah, use all the pieces, it'll go fine. Uh, here, I thought about, like, assuming white wants to trade, we could have had this. This didn't seem so enticing. I don't know why. Because, like, yeah, I have a dominance in the center, but I'd rather have an advanced pawn on the flank here. So this is surprisingly complicated if white wants to trade. 
if white doesn't want to trade, well, yeah, we might as well just play this. And now I am still thinking, like, I want this knight, and to get the knight I have to target the pawn supporting it. Even if, like, that pawn gets, gets supported, uh, I could still take here. So I could win a pawn and have kind of a fun, complex endgame where I'm up two pawns. Um, I don't know if we're really in an endgame yet. It's kind of dangerous for the kings. So, and not to say that that's the only variation, but yeah, stuff like that's possible. Um, A4, very active, very good. Um, this is actually the the thought that A4 is so strong is having me... Well, I only played B6 after Bishop D5 got played. So, like, back here, A4 is not as strong, because I've not yet committed to B6. So, yeah, I was about to suggest, like, since A4 is so strong, maybe it should be played first. Um, but here... Since I haven't committed to b6, this is a bit slow. And I should be able to do something, like what I was suggesting. So, this would force this kind of exchange. Um, See, so yeah, pawn pushes in the end game tend to be really slow. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing wrong with bishop d5. Um, also, possible is moving the knight. Also possible is just bringing the rook out without pushing the pawn, but there's a lot of possibilities here. Uh, yeah, so it's around here that I'm actually kicking myself for trading all the pieces. Like, against this, maybe I should have just gone back and saw this through to whatever complex madness that I tend to like. Um, hmm. Yeah, Leela is confusing, that's for sure. People have been making... People who have not, are not Leela developers make claims all the time about how Leela works and what issues it may or may not have. And I think during... Leela's initial training, this really pissed off the developers, who said, like, no, we're doing it right, trust us, we know what we're doing, just leave us be, we'll get this done. Uh, at this point, since Leela is such a success, now criticism is, I guess, welcome, but also people making it don't know what they're talking about in general. Um, hmm. Okay, did, was I... No, I was not too hasty here. I still have this. Um, just in case things go completely south. So yeah, I was not too hasty. I was just too excited to play this. So that's why I played knight g4, but in hindsight, like... Oh, uh, why couldn't I find anything better? I don't know. Chess is hard. But yeah, this attack is... Well, I mean, this also makes me reconsider when e5 was pushed. Did I have something more aggressive I could have done? Probably. Uh, so if I could undermine the knight, maybe I could take out the bishop. No. No. This bishop is defended this way, too, and I can't undermine the queen. Um. Hmm. Yeah, no, this is super effective at killing whatever attack I was starting to conjure. I wish I had an attack here. I should have played something more aggressive, I guess. How could I have intensified my... Well, yeah, when I played rook e8, that was defensive. If I want to play something more aggressive, like play rook c8 and then this... And forget this pawn. That would have been one way to make things more aggressive. 
Another more aggressive option, I guess, would have been a6. Yeah, intending b5, and I was actually uncomfortable at this point, so... Um, yeah, this is stuff I could study better. So, yeah, if I wanted a really sharp game, I could have had it. Instead, this pawn sack forces me to liquidate into an endgame, which I was fine with. Um, yeah. Turns out that innovating in the Sicilian opening is kind of hard. Um, yeah, so do I have a comment on a5? I'm not sure. So a5 was the move played. It's a tough position. Okay, well, I guess this is worth noting, that if I do something stupid, like, this is bad, so knight d5 is playable. Is it good? Well, it drops the pawn. Yeah, somehow I was imagining knight d5 and b3, but there's no time for it. Um... Yeah, if this rook were over hitting the swell, maybe we do have time for it. No. Uh, end games are hard. Yeah, I think. I guess there's not time for knight d5. And since there's not time for knight d5. Um, and since I think my knight c4 forces this exchange, I think what all this means is that a4 is mistimed. Um, because white's attack just erodes. Um, yeah, this knight c4 is too good. Well, hang on. Is there something complicated here? I forgot, the rook can defend this. Um, there's this. And then we have a counterattack over here. And then... what? I'm just wishing this could like show up right there. That would just make my day. <laughs> uh, okay. I've made my bishop bad, but if I exchange it for this, like, white gets a counterattack. Uh, instead, I could play here. Um, this rook is too prone if it moves forward, so I guess we go here. And my bishop's trapped? I don't know. Like, trapped in the sense that I have to exchange it. So, uh, maybe I've misplayed with e6. Um, this is interesting. Where's the drop pieces? Where's the attacking action? Yeah. Opinions may differ. Grandmaster Kaufman explains that, like, Shogi fixes all the problems that chess has. He doesn't put it exactly in those terms, but that's pretty much the reality of it. Yeah, so this bishop f5 might be misplayed. Um, oh, 
Huh, I don't know. This suggests that my knight c4 is kind of bogus, and it is, so what else do I play? If I need to stop rook d3, um, this does come to mind, but then there's another tempo. Ay, ay, ay. And if I hit this, well, okay, this is okay for me. So this is if white plays, well, I would say passively, but that's not really passive. This is pursuing, trying to promote that pawn, and pushing just runs into knight takes and knight takes. So... Huh. Oh, but then I have this fork. So then this exchange happens, then this happens, and Rook goes somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I guess Rook a7 threatening this. Um, and the square's cut off by the knight. Um... Yeah, this looks reasonable for both players. Yeah, it's great that Shogi has all decisive results, whereas here my concern is, like, how do players play their best moves without black risking a draw here? Like, I would rather risk a loss than a draw. This is too exciting. We're not playing for some sort of prize money where I get uh, something for a draw. So it's more fun to play as if I need to win. Alright, so yeah, I think I should not have allowed this rook d3. This is actually kind of mean. Um, I mean, yeah, I can take a pawn and I could go back. But I think bishop f5 using all of my pieces, like I've been recommending other players do, would have set a good example. So, yeah, instead we ended up here, but um, another possibility is just bishop c6. Well, then a5 come. Well, I have the fork. I forgot. So if a bishop exchange happens and a5 happens, then I win a pawn. Um, well, that's assuming a5 does happen. Oh, but this drops the knight. This is not considerable. Um, this cannot be considered. So, yeah, I think black is better here. Because um, a5 drops the pawn, b3 drops a pawn. Like, the only way to not drop pawns is to move the knight. And even this probably still drops a pawn, and this is loose, and it's, it's a mess. It's a fun mess. So, like, this sets up a tactic here, uh, which can be countered by that. And, oh, oops. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, black's still better, but this requires technique. Yeah. There is some risk of a draw here, that's for sure. Because I'm only up one pawn. Um, let's see, a knight d5. Uh, let's see, where was that? That wasn't here. Oh, that was after this exchange. Yeah, knight d5 is more active. Um, just the way it turned out. Because a5 runs into b5, and now, like, this a pawn is advanced, but I'm pretty sure it's not promoting. Because I control squares. I control a lot of squares. 
so it's going to be very difficult for my opponent to attack my a pawn if they can't get through this tremendous barrier that I've set up. Um, I control this too. So yeah, I was banking on like, yes, this a pawn's passed, but I can start exchanging other stuff and come back for the a pawn when I want to. Um, okay. So in that bishop f5, rook f3, e6, bishop d4 line, didn't you have knight d2? Alright, so are we talking about this line? Rook f3, e6, um, bishop d4, yeah, this one. Didn't I have knight d2? Yeah, that's too easy. we got to save that for, like, unsuspecting opponent like so when we're no okay yeah this is perfectly reasonable um i mean yeah white can recover from this this is survivable but um actually it's not just kidding yeah knight d2 wins there um just being up two pawns in a rook end game is a very good position for black. So yeah, that means this e6 is justified. And since e6 is justified, then rook f3 doesn't quite work. And since rook f3 doesn't quite work, then this whole variation is fine for black. Um, so yeah, but rook d3 would have been complicated, but white has to sack material here. Or, after rook f3, e6, um, instead of allowing this fork, this fork, because that's how knights move, um, instead of allowing that, uh, white could take here. And um, this is actually a bad bishop for right now, but the pawns are still mobile, things could still change. White could expose, or black could expose their king a bit more in order to make this a better bishop um, by moving these pawns, but um, generally the bishop's okay if it's outside the pawn chain. And there's, I mean, is white going to try to defend this pawn? I mean, I favor activity here, so I would play a5. I know in the game I suggest I just push past here, if I push past, knight takes, and this is, again, kind of messy, and the knight would threaten this. Uh, yeah, it's, this is imbalanced. This is exciting. Um, that said, as black, I'd probably avoid this. So rook d3, even though, like, that knight fork justifies the one variation, um, I think this is still problematic, and probably I should just get on with my development and try to play a good endgame. Um, so I was initially thinking bishop f5 might outright refute rook d3. My goal here was to refute rook d3. I failed to refute it that way. So instead we have this. And this is still imbalanced, but I favor this over the variation we were just looking at here. Well, over this one, I favor it over this one. Like, of all these variations, the one I prefer most is this taking on b2. Even though all these other things are possible, um, this uh, keeps white's positions as cons or pieces as constrained as possible. And yeah, there is an attack on f7, and I could just defend it. And yeah, they're, they could attack, like, e7 now, and we'll just defend it, and, you know. Maybe rook f8's not best. I would like to push this, but I can't. Um, my bishop sucks, so maybe I should trade it. There's a thought. Uh, yeah, rook f8's a different thought. Uh, we're going to ask the engine's opinion here. Oh, I forgot. I have my custom user style that colors the engine bar because America. 
Okay, yeah, Stockfish agrees. Trading the bishops is fine. Stockfish is pretty good at endgames. Uh, what else is there? Okay, so then we have the endgame. Yeah, after b5, I'm up a pawn and I have a bishop instead of a knight. This is good resistance. Yeah, if that knight gets traded, it, this becomes much harder. Um, so I was debating stuff like this. It doesn't work. I wanted it to work, but I'm playing against a shogi pro who can calculate. So I'm like, yeah, I can't do my BS nonsense that I do against a lot of opponents. This is just bad. Um, like I was looking at stuff like this and what if I sack the bishop and then I could take here and I could take here and this is check and this end game is not very good. Um, like they're compared to other end games I could have, this is actually kind of treacherous. Well, I didn't like it. Maybe it's play. Maybe it's fine to sack the bishop there. Maybe this is all playable. Um, the other thing is after bishop takes, there might still be this. Um, yeah, I don't know, this gets complicated. Um, I wanted this to work, but let's see, what was, well, for one thing, the knight just moves away and my bishop looks kind of dumb. Um, I mean, yeah, I do get a pawn, um, and then this exchange occurs, and, like, this is even worse. Um, so yeah, against rook d4, having considered those things, uh, I also looked at this, and, like, this is no fun. This is definitely no fun. So yeah, against rook d4, I just had to defend my pawn. Is this similar to when chess players play shogi? Um, I'm not sure. So like, there is some level of playing with or without domain knowledge. Certainly in openings, like chess players who just crossed over into shogi, I can say, like, I didn't know openings, things went very terribly in openings. I didn't know sume, things went terribly in the end game. Like, there's areas where, like, mistakes had happened that are pretty grave when I was playing shogi. Um, but I'm not actually sure what you're referring to, because this is actually a pretty good game, I think. Um, like... Carolina did point out there was this one drop of a pawn that she was upset about, but this is actually clever in its own way, that whatever attack I'm building that involves this knight attacking either this bishop or b2 or stuff like that, like, I have to exchange my knight here. Uh, I thought about this because I wanted to keep my knight, and this just gets crazy. Um... Uh, this gets crazy. If there's a way to justify it, I'm not seeing it. But, um, so yeah, the pawn sacrifice was good because it stopped my attack. Uh, like here, if I want to give up this bishop instead of trading my knight for their knight, there might be a way to get this to work. I do play a lot of really crazy stuff, so like this sort of thing might be doable. But in general, like, yeah, I think this was good in its own sense. Like it simplified the position when things kept getting extremely complex and forced this exchange of a piece. And now this is manageable again. It's just it's also difficult to win when you've given up a pawn, but like this is manageable at this point where things were just getting... I don't know I'd call that a mistake. Like, 
stockfish would, but I think this makes the position fine for white. Being down upon in a dragon Sicilian where like the dragon doesn't get to attack anything is actually kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, the late end game. So I guess the question is because we're thinking the end game is so good. Like what happened? How did we get such a good end game? Um, yeah, what was the turning point? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think the mistake was this bishop h6. So in shogi they say you need four pieces to attack. I don't know what they say in chess. Um, but like here we got two pieces attacking. Two pieces are pretty good. But uh, I just had this where suddenly I've got three pieces that are doing stuff. And so yeah, maybe you need more than two pieces to break, bring an attack successfully. Um, I think this might have been the turning point in the game. Because, yeah, this end game uh, with bishop h6 does look quite good. Uh, I know I enjoy end games quite a bit. Uh, but this is, this is playable for white, but I much favor it for black. Um, black is up one pawn. This looks very... Uh, I don't know. I have two feelings about this. One is that this is better for black. The other is that this is complicated. Like, I didn't want to go into this despite my... in general, that I really enjoy playing endgames. This one didn't look so fun to play. Let's see. Um, yeah. I saw somebody linked uh, two videos, and I pinned that in my Shogi channel in my Discord. Uh, who shared that? Sorry, it's been a long week. Um, but, yeah, there are two good videos about common edge file pattern attacks in Shogi. Um, I'll have to check that out again, because there's just a lot of material. Um, but, yeah, often... It's about just creating weaknesses behind wherever your opponent's pieces capture. It's not so much about trying to win material. Whereas in chess, like, if tactics don't win material, they have to be pretty convincing. Ah, yeah, sent by a time zombie. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, here we got b4... All right, we commented all this stuff. So yeah, this is a really complicated endgame in general. Um, not something a person enjoys playing in time pressure. But I think both players navigated it quite well. Uh, here, what I was thinking is if rook b8, this check, and then this discovery can happen. Um, I'm not actually sure that it's that good, but... Uh, yeah, why did I allow this? Why did I let this happen? I don't know. Engine, tell me. Minus 1.5. Rook takes c5. Rook b2 check. Uh, so the line is suggesting is this rook b2 and you play bishop b5 and a6. And I guess eventually you make some threat on the a-pawn and hope that your own king and this stuff doesn't come under attack. I don't know that I buy it. Minus 1.8 seems a bit optimistic. Whatever. So yeah, this idea that I had in this variation might not have been the best. Um, but also, my other idea is this. Oh, I also have this. And if the other variation, like with this rook b1 check and such, 
ends up with the bishop on b5 anyway. Um, yeah, a6, let's just put the pawn on a bad square. We have time to do that. Um, so how does this go? Um, so let's say I'm doing something crazy and I allow both players to promote. This is check. Um, then we go centralize the queen. Yeah, this is still good for black. No, white's up a knight. What am I talking about? This black can draw, but probably not win. Probably can lose, but... Yeah, actually, this is probably lost. Well, yeah, there's practical chances, because these pawns can hold up against the knight. and We have a passed pawn, but sacking the bishop is not so bright here. So against rook b8, I probably have to play a6. Um, and, yeah, against this, I don't know, something like that, maybe. Wait, 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 why am I not taking the knight? Because I'm pinned. But I'm not pinned anymore. I saw that. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's pretend I saw that during the game. Um, so yeah, this a6, surprisingly sound. Yes, I calculated all this that, like, I have the square under attack, and I got this attacked, and this is attacked. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everything was under control all along. So... Uh, our shogi master saw all that and played rook d7 instead. <sighs> and this might win my e-pawn. Um, so note if I play king f8, we just repeat. So I saved us the trouble of doing that. I just played king f6. Uh, let's see. Knight e4 fork. That is a fork. And this is, in fact, yeah, this happened in the game. Oh, wait. Did I miss something in the game? Could I have just done this? And then if takes, takes, attack. No, because, like, this is actually defended this way. I saw all that. Yep. Good old, good chess player me saw all of that. Not really, but, um, yeah, c4 is important in this position. Uh, I did see that if I play rook b5, like, we get this, and then this gets picked up. So I decide to save a tempo on that. Uh, we could end up here anyway. But here... Yeah, I was... Like... So I thought this... I wasn't sure whether I hallucinated this or not. Like here, if the king moves, uh, this is promotion. If the king doesn't move, you check here and then you promote. I wasn't sure if I hallucinated this or not, but... Um, plan B is to transpose back into this position. So, like, when I said I could play rook b5 first and we could end up here uh, if I try to win the pawn. Instead, if I push c5 first, which I did push in the game, and or c4, if I push this first, we could end up in the same position. Um... But this leaves open the possibility that somehow I might promote the C-pawn. In fact, in the game I did wuss out. Okay. How much time did I have on the clock? I had 19 seconds to figure this out. Um... Is there a way to refute this? Mm. 
why... I'm kind of mad at myself. A little bit. I could have figured that out. Okay. So if I play this, check this. I could have figured this out in 20 seconds. Uh, why didn't I figure this out? I don't know. I mean, worst case, I have to defend against their thing. And in defending, like, we end up in this endgame. This is what I was afraid of. But this... yeah, I missed a thing. And that... wait, just kidding. Go back. Oh, you can actually cancel that. That's nice. Yeah, an 81 dojo, they wouldn't let you cancel a move you're halfway into. I'm pretty sure. Um, so, yeah, they promote. But, wait, actually, can I stop the promotion somehow? Yeah, I can stop the promotion. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. Um, now, obviously, there might be some mate. Like, Stockfish is going to say mate in 4? I was going to say 10, but okay. Check. 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 Oh! Okay. Yeah, it's not mate in 10, it's mate in 4. So, yeah, I could have calculated that. I had time. What was I so distracted by? I don't know. Yeah, Bioyomi would be great. Oh, in fact, I have a five second increment. I should use all of my 20 seconds then. Why did I... I'm out of shape, guys. Oh, 81 Dojo lets you cancel a move. If you reach the promotion menu, you press escape to cancel the move. Good to know, because I might use that someday. Yeah, so I missed this. Shame. Shame on me. I need to do like 1,000 endgame problems or something, except Lee Chess doesn't have endgame problems. So, uh, we play enough Blitz. Um, yeah, I wussed out, which led to us getting this endgame. So yeah, I saw, I think I just got obsessed with the fact that I had this transposition. That had I played rook b5 first, this was my backup variation. And, like, I was so comforted by the fact that I had this, that I let that happen during the game. I forgot that I was considering something more aggressive. I was also looking forward to the post-game analysis. Um, even if it's not in real time, obviously, because, like, it's past midnight in Japan. Um, still looking forward to me analyzing this, so. Yeah, I'm less looking forward to this analysis now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, this is difficult. Uh, I don't like post-game analysis anymore. <laughs> um, okay, so King D6 forces... So I was expecting Rook B7. Um, Rook C4 is probably fine. Like, everything's fine here. It's all different shades of gray. Not that it's drawn, but, like... Uh, and in general, I should be pushing one of these two pawns and then corralling the e-pawn and, like, Stockfish, give us a number. Not that number. No. Not that number. Definitely not that number. Give me a better number. 
really stockfish. And your suggested line, rook a2, king f3, rook a3, king f2. Excellent suggestion by the engine. Why don't we just repeat moves all day while well, it tries to give me a better answer. Let's go deeper. Let's search 99 half moves deep. Let's solve chess. And unfortunately, despite Lee Chess having this monster of an endgame table base, this position has too many pieces. But yeah, like black's up a pawn, white has an isolated pawn. You don't give this position minus one. Like this is at least minus two. This is like very, very favorable for black. Um... The only thing black has to be concerned about is accidentally losing these pawns in the back. Um, okay, well, I'm being contradicted by my viewership. Like, yes, grandmasters and masters have written that the more pawns there are, the more drawing opportunities are available. And white's pawn on e4 is sufficiently far advanced that there are some drawing opportunities. Um, so yes, being up a pawn is not, but like the, in general, when we talk about four on three, we're talking about like pawn, pawn, pawn versus something like this. In general, this pawn's back here. This being isolated, I thought made this favorable for black with lots of winning chances um so like i'm not happy about the number the engine's giving me here because this is not how i see the position i see this as strongly favoring but not completely winning for black but this seems extremely hard to hold i would be surprised like if the engine could hold this against me um, but it would find a way. It would surprise me. I would be upset. Yeah, so 4v3 aren't as solved as 3v2. White does have holding chances. I am so contradicting myself because I'm saying two things. I'm saying simultaneously that black is winning this. But I'm also saying that an engine, like, with perfect play, this could be held. Mm. Show, uh, chess is complex. Yeah, this, like, there's tons and tons of practical chances against a human. I'm just a bit bitter that the engine doesn't agree with my assessment. Um... All right, so let's keep the engine on. What if we play my favorite move here that I was too scared to play during the game? Is this bad? Yeah, no, this creates weaknesses. This is bad. All right, this is why I played F6, is because I was afraid of making weaknesses. All right, the engine suggests rook b4. I guess we'll play rook b4. Rook a2 ain't happening here. We're going to play something sharper. Um, oh, rook a2, king f3, rook a3, king f2, rook a5. Rook a5. I don't understand. Um, no, I want to play h5 here. h4 is forced. Um, rook a5, rook b6, king e5, rook b7, e6, rook g7, king e5. Oh. Yeah, king over here is broken from the pawn. But. But I'm. My position. My position's so much better. But fine. Okay, is g5 any good? Like, why is g4 not the engine's preferred move? It probably just drops a pawn. Rook a2, oh, k5, 
King E5. Oh, right, this square. Yeah, this concedes the F4 square. So yeah, um, G4 is not playable. Engine suggests Rook B5. Okay, this is creating an E5 threat. Um, which I think I'm just going to ignore. Oh, h4 even here. Oh, this is why the engine wanted to play rook a5 earlier. Oh. Or, this is why rook a5 was recommended by the engine. Oh, it's to avoid this tactic. Okay. Now I'm starting to see. So this is why we're playing strange rook moves today. Mystifying. So yeah, now h4 is forced to prevent g5 from happening. Um, yeah, so I actually agree with the engine's assessment about this. Or at least the, with the moves recommended. Rook e7. Really. So a minute ago it was suggesting trade this h-pawn for the e-pawn. But I was about to suggest I agree with the engine's moves, but disagree with the conclusion, because this actually looks good for black. Uh, rook h6. Is rook a2 an improvement? Yeah, it stops the pawn from moving. After king g3, king f5. Is rook a3 an improvement? Where was this rook before we checked? It was here. Um, so if the king walks up the board, this promotes. So the king has to go back. Yeah, this rook is more active on a3 than on a5. So fine. Yeah, and this, this looks good for black. Again, not one, but lots of winning chances. Um, the engine disagrees and says this is minus one, meaning black is better, but... Don't bet the farm on it. I don't know. Is this in the table base yet? No. When are we going to hit the table base? Okay, rook a2. Looks sensible. Why not king g5? Why are we checking the king to bring it forward? Is that just this king pawn formation is too solid and we need to break it up to create some counterplay? <sighs> is the engine really committed to this move? Rook a2, king e3, rook a3. No, rook a2, king f5, king g5. Yeah, it's shuffling, it's equivocating between... Well, it's thinking all the moves are equal. Rook a2 is a great shuffling move, but I don't think it makes progress. Uh, king f5 is kind of interesting. Because that brings our king one square closer to d3, and once we're on d3, our pawn runs. So king f5 is probably the most accurate move here. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's the winning plan here for black? The winning plan is bring the king... He uh, I can't draw the arrow. Um, you can't draw weird shaped arrows. Well, I'm sorry, there's a way to do it. Is it true that holding the control key lets me draw these weird arrows, or is it the shift key or something? Like... The idea is you want to get the king on d3 and then race this up. So, like, this is the idea. Um, and in trying to stop that, white is eventually going to drop the g-pawn and, like, black wins. That's the idea. Well, I'm using an on uh, You raise a good point. So, the browser-based engine does not benefit from the table bases. 
but you know what would benefit from the table bases? This here button. Uh, if I ask the server to analyze this game, it's going to use the table bases, but it's only going to look for like four seconds of CPU time per position. So it'll come up with some sort of assessment. Uh, but yeah. H4 is good. H4 tries to make this murky. <laughs> uh, Alright. Yeah, so... Uh, the engine does not like my Rook D3 move. It's suggesting that E6 is best. Oh, because now I have the tempo to play G5 later. When, like, everything comes under attack. So, now is a good time to not waste a move. Um, yeah, if I could play e6 and then quickly get in g5, this becomes winning. Because then I get these two connected pawns. This disappears. And white might be threatening to promote their h-pawn or something, but two pawns beats one. So, yeah. I forgot e6 was... Well, no, I thought about e6 in the 26 seconds I had here. I spent half my time in this position and couldn't come up with... Like, I did see e6, I just misevaluated it. Um, my consideration was if I play e6, uh, she plays rook b6. Um, but if I'd looked a bit deeper, if I'd spent another 10 seconds, I might have found this. And given that we had an increment, like, I should have spent more time. Um, so your stockfish shows us a move 38 back here, rook a2, h3, h5, rook a2, h3. We must have a slightly different something going on here. So I'm curious how I get... Oh, 38. Right, rook a2 here. Uh, oh, yes. This I should have seen. Uh, keep the king out altogether. I was a bit slow on the uptake. Yeah, I played my king up because I was excited. That was not my finest move. Although the engine likes it. But yeah, your engine prefers this. And then king f1, rook a7, king f2, king e5, um, g3, f6, uh, h4, e6, so yeah, similar to the game, uh, king e3, rook a3, etc. So like this is similar to the position I was looking at a second ago where I missed my chance to play. Um, e6. Where did I do that? Yeah, here where I should have played e6. Like, very similar concept. And the idea is I get to play g5, and if white doesn't take, then g4, and then check, and then win the pawn. So, like, g5 is a strong threat here, and yeah, then the, these isolated pawns, um, become kind of a problem for white. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, right. So if white threatens stuff here, you can threaten white's pawn, and she has to defend, and it's just painful. Instead, we saw some really weird shuffling by both players, and then we saw this exchange, and this became a little bit easier. Um... But yeah, no, I'm actually threatening to win this pawn, so like now, um, yeah, this would have been an alternative. Uh, yeah, I am relying a bit on the engine just because I'm lazy at this point. Uh, we saw how many other things I missed during the game and how I tried to analyze some of these things. So note if you go up, there's a perpetual, so you have to go back. Uh, rook b3, rook a4, so this is shuffling. 
Okay, so the engine thinks this is just fine for white if they if she attacks this pawn over here. I can't say I disagree. Yeah, like this is a very active formation. So I missed e6 several, or at least twice. I missed it on move 45. Uh, I missed it on move 44. I missed it on move 43. On 42. Let's see, is this the first time I missed e6? And the reason it's fine here is because there's no rook c7. So like on e6, they'd ha she'd have to play rook b4. And then we could again threaten uh, this sort of stuff. So yeah, rook b7. I'm surprised king takes pawns the move. This position must be really good if we can't, if this isn't the key move. Uh, if, like, forcing the opponent's king away is less of a priority than taking a pawn, then we must be pretty winning this. e5. Oh, okay, so this is the point of taking the pawn, is that we push one move faster. Uh, or I guess 7. Or, yeah, I don't know if I like the rest of this variation, but up to this point it looks pretty good. Um... So the evaluation given on the previous ply here was minus 1.3. As in, like, this is better for black. Um, it's going to be difficult to hold. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure, like, what were my thoughts toward the end here? Like, obviously I consider that the rook trade would be better for me. Uh, that's why I offered it. Um, but, you know, what was I thinking here? Because I don't want to see this move. Was I seriously about to play this e6 move that I had avoided for so long? Um, because this is problematic. Like, I can't do this. Um, so because of that's not really feasible. King f3, well, okay, this is my optimistic way of thinking about it. Um, but, um, yeah, I underestimated this. I think this is what I was thinking. So, like, I was thinking I'd have some winning chances here. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty hard. Especially because this lands and hits my pawn. And I can't really use my rook to defend that. Huh. So this is what I was wanting. Um, so that said, I probably would have settled on king takes, even though this is not so great. Like, this is drawish. Maybe I would have played the engine's move, just like out of frustration that nothing else was working right now. I would have tried to play this. Maybe. Yeah, this is some accurate defense here. Um, why is this no good? What's so bad about this? H takes, F takes, rook b5. Okay. Rook c3, king f2. Okay, we could perpetual check the king, but what's so bad about this? Rook f5, rook e5. 
and it's a draw. I missed this during the game. This would have been interesting. So yeah, there were definitely misplays by both players toward the end. Uh, rapid games, I guess, can go this way. Even like the US women's champion makes mistakes in rapid time pressure. Well, yeah. I don't need to say too much about that, but yeah. It's hard to spot all the engine moves in these end games. But I offered the Rook Exchange. We got a Rook Exchange, and now, like, White just gets Zug swonged. Um, the engine suggests this. I guess the point is that you want to trade as many pawns as you can, and this is a way of forcing a trade. Um, I don't know that this move actually throws anything away. Because, yeah, you can still play g4 here. At least the way I played it, it didn't matter. I'm actually curious. Why, why am I so curious here? What's to be curious about? I could just play this. We end up in the same position. Like... There's nothing special here. I don't know why the engine suggests... Like, sometimes it just needs more time to calculate. But yeah, this is also... Like, there's nothing tricky about it. It's just a bit deeper. But that's okay. Uh, <laughs> could she reverse the standard rook draws in increment? You know, I wonder, uh, reverse engineer that is, um, I wonder how many players, even how many masters could figure this out in an increment time control. It's funny, one of the training tutorial things that was in Lee Chess, like there's this practice menu, one of these here had to do with king and, oh, sorry for the blue on green. This is my first time using my user style on here. I might have looked at this forever ago and never fixed it, because I'm lazy. Uh, but yeah, somewhere in here was like king and rook versus king and pawns. There's some trading something or other. Um, rook end games. I don't know. Like, one of these was extraordinarily difficult, and Zug and I were looking at it on his stream for the longest time. I don't know. One of these things is like impossibly difficult and not intended for beginners if Stockfish plays all the book moves, the end game table based moves. So, yeah, I don't think, like, if masters struggle with this, I don't think amateurs could figure it out either. It could be fun, like, just have a setup position for set up your own tournament. If you could do this with a custom start position, that'd be great. Uh, you just say, I want not this. I'm just going to set up a custom position, and instead of, like, the normal position, it's just going to be, uh, sorry. I need to type better. Over here, it's going to be a rook, three empty spaces, a king, two empty spaces, and a rook. And on white's first rank, instead of these three pieces, we'll just have a couple empty squares. Yeah, so have like this as a beginner training thing. And just make a tournament out of it. See how many players get these standard rook things and how many of them can draw it. And if two rooks is too fearsome, yeah, I don't know, then just like take some of the rooks out. I think this could be a good beginner training tournament thing. Yeah. Like, it's not too dissimilar from what I've done in some of my real-life chess classes with kids, so... Um, yeah, there's a lot to learn there. Making a tournament out of it sounds delightful. <laughs> also, sounds ridiculous, because, like, some of the kids are going to go on to move 1,000 with it. But hey, yeah, it's good practice. Ah, the Dragonfly Handicap, played with only the Rook, Bishop, and Pawns. Oh, that's cool. 
really gets you to practice those. Not have to worry about all the other pieces. That's kind of clever. But yeah, overall this is a good game. Um, this was the shape of the evaluation. Yeah. Maybe what was bemoaned here wasn't so much the loss of a pawn, but just loss of the initiative. Like, with this pawn dropping, suddenly I'm making threats. Whereas prior to this, this is actually pretty messy. Um, queen f4. I have to admit, I didn't see queen f4. How many of you saw queen f4 during the game? That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, you don't need time to respond, because, like, nobody saw this. And I was considering bishop e6 in some positions, and maybe I would have found this here. Um, gosh, what? how would I have reacted if I saw this move? So one thing to note is, like, f7 is loose, so if I move the knight to attack the queen, one of these pieces is going to take on f7. Um, probably the queen. Yeah, that's clever. Another thing to note is that this is a backward pawn, so I don't want to push e5, which would block my bishop, because it would also create this pawn weakness. So, yeah, maybe I could have found bishop e6, but this is difficult. The Sicilian's a tricky opening. Yeah, let's give myself some credit. Say, like, I would have noticed this is bad, and I need to use my bishop, and I couldn't find any other way to get the bishop out this way like I wanted to. Um, yeah, I probably could have found this. And then we exchange. Okay, yes, I am threatening this stuff, so defending the b-pawn makes some sense. Uh, this is a kind of typical idea in the King's Indian, I think. Um... I mean, a lot of things are typical, but like here, if you end up with some sort of opening where the knight, for whatever reason, cannot transition through e7 to g6, another idea is to drop back this way. And this covers the dark squares around your king, so this is reasonable. Um, I would have preferred to try to do this, but here this is just no bueno. Like... You don't want this, so yeah, knight d8, it would have had to be. And this, I might have gotten these moves right, but beyond this, like, who knows. So the engine prefers h3. Again, knight of Susan's natural, but like, a lot of things are natural here. It's hard to know what's best. I'd be tempted to play knight h5 in a variety of positions. I'd be tempted to sack the exchange, except that drops my pawn. So, yeah, maybe I would have found this knight of 7. Queen h4. I don't think this would have gone this way. I think before we got... Well... Okay, yeah, I don't have a g5 threat. Um, I might have a, knight, a bishop h6 threat, but... Assuming this exchange happens, a lot of things are possible here. And just because after four seconds of thinking the engine traverse one move or another doesn't mean that's best. So, yeah, other ideas could involve, I don't know, maybe bishop h6, maybe knight d2, maybe knight d4. Um... I keep wanting to try to find something crazy that players can do here, because the crazy moves are the fun ones. Um, if this knight weren't here, then we could consider this, but the knight's in the way. And there's no good way to get the knight out of the way. So, chess is hard. But, yeah, queen f4 was best. It breaks the rule of not moving pieces twice in the opening but we're kind of out of the opening at this point because all the pieces have moved. So, yep, that is called an Irish pawn center. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we had a fun discussion about Irish mascots the other day. Anyway, we don't need to repeat that here. We can have that channel elsewhere, or that discussion elsewhere in a different channel. 
it was a good discussion uh yes yeah, so tough game um were there earlier opening things that i could look at uh so yeah i could have played d5 let's say once we're here are there other serious knight c6 is worth considering keeping open the possibility of d5 okay now i played knight c6 what else could h6 i could have tried what do the masters play here the masters all play knight c6 there's one master game where h6 was played and um average rating of 22 32 and this ended up with white winning the game so maybe i don't play h6 even though a master has played h6 i did consider knight bd7 uh rejected it on the grounds that like yes this is actually a decent move but it's not a sicilian move and i didn't uh, i didn't want to go here i wanted to learn more about the sicilian but yeah i'm curious like if i were facing this and not trying to learn from the game while also playing it if i were just playing well i guess there is something to learn here too uh masters have played queen d2 and rook e1 um Well, since it's longer path for the knight to end up on... Again, I can't draw the funny arrow from the light square to the light square. Um, since this is a bit of a journey to get there. Whereas on c6, yeah, you would typically go through e5, but like here you have other ideas too. I'm not sure. No, I actually kind of like the rook where it is. So queen d2 connecting the rooks is best. <clears throat> pardon me queen b6 knight b3 yeah so we end up playing knight c5 anyway um at least if we're following master games uh what if we improvise oh knight c5 of course no i i don't believe this knight takes pawns good Uh, I'm looking at it. Knight takes pawn. Knight takes knight. Queen takes knight. Queen takes. Bishop takes. We're still not taking this. What's going on? I don't know. But, like, this is no better than what I played. Like, this is plus point four. Um following the database this is plus point six it's knight bd7 yeah the engine does not like this at all because at best it just transposes back into knight e5 lines where you prefer to have the knight on c6 anyway so yeah if i'm following the engine suggestions and most master moves we end up here Yeah, a while ago, Chess Life ran an article about a decade back. Yeah, this is unusual, but like they recommended something called the Chinese Dragon, I think. I forget how it goes. It was like Queen A5, Rook D8 or something. Or was it Rook FC8? I don't remember. But White Castle's Queen side in that one. I think that's what had me confused. Is I wanted to try out this Chinese dragon, and I forgot that it only happens against a queenside castle. Um, yeah. So, uh, knight c6 was a good move. Yeah, upon having looked at knight bd7, it's just underwhelming because black exchanged the c-pawn for the d-pawn. Which also has me thinking, like, move two of the game. I could have done some interesting stuff here. I faced this position before, and I always take here. Um, but taking is... To take is a mistake. Like, I don't know. If my goal is really to get a Benko, like, here's a way to try to transpose back into it. 
my goal is not to get a Benko, but just to have an interesting game. D5 might be playable. But if they take here, what do masters do here? E6, E4, bishop takes, E takes, E takes. Okay, so that's a playable move for tournaments. And for matches, there's this. And yeah, white could continue playing this. Interesting. Uh, we have gone into some very strange territory here. So yeah, knight f6 on move 2 is probably the thing I should have done here. And against pawn takes, um, e6 again, e3, and we take, and if she tries to hold the pawn, a5, c3, a, b, c, b, b6. Okay, this is in the database. I'm tempted to keep clicking, because we keep getting more database moves, but um, at this point, black's fine, right? Yeah, black's at least a half pawn better. So white can't grab a pawn. So yeah, knight of six is fine. And actually quite interesting. Uh, so the engine prefers d5. Engine prefers b5. So it actually... This is all recommended by an engine. That's pretty funny. Engine prefers d6 here. I don't know why. Queen b6 looks fine. Wait, I'm sorry, the engine recommends e3. Yeah, even though this move's been played 224 times, I don't like it. Let's look at e3. Okay, now engine prefers d6. Again, I don't see the point. Let's play the database move. Bishop b7, knight c3, b4, knight a4, queen a5, bishop takes g takes i kind of like it this is kind of like a caro except without all the bad parts all right what have i missed okay yeah this is interesting so well the engine favors white heavily um do i dispute that uh, engine suggests c4. Knight a6 is tricky, but I don't like it. Bishop g7 makes sense. Like, the bishop's going to g7 anyway. But also, this means that the square is loose. Ah, e6. Now we're talking. Um, okay. Yeah, white wants to oppose the diagonal. F5 looks fun. Bishop G7. Castle. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm slowly agreeing with the engine that this is just... Black is trapped. This is not very good. So how do I escape this? So the engine repeatedly recommended this D6 move. And Queen B6 looked fun, but D6 looks sensible. Um, so now, after e4, taking the center, <laughs> one of the database moves is knight takes pawn. But this is loose. Okay, this is just crazy. How did we get here? We got here because black played b5. Why is black playing b5? 2020 games black plays b5 here this is the masters database why has everybody why have all the masters lost their minds here like b5 is you play that after white plays c4 you play that as a gambit if this doesn't make any sense the engine likes it too which also doesn't make sense or the engine recommends it too um, I guess it's hard to suggest a good move for black. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, this pawn takes pawn is sensible. And the engine recommendation. Yeah, I'm actually warming up to it. It looks okay. E6 looks more adventurous, but... Um, <laughs> okay, the engine prefers E3, the database recommend engine recommends E3. The database shows that masters prefer E3, although some play G3 here. Against G3 we just take it, right? Yeah. And then this looks just a little silly for white, because eventually they'll want to do something about this pawn, but they've already pushed the G pawn. So, d5 is popular, but that seems, I don't, this doesn't make sense. Why would you push d5 here? Yes, taking the center, okay, yeah, I guess normally you don't get the opportunity to take the center this way. So playing it right now makes a lot of sense. And d5, push g2. Second ago, the engine was recommending e5 here. It's not feasible. Like, this was recommended as part of the suggested continuation, but uh, yeah, I don't believe this. So that's why the engine backed off and now recommends um, just bishop g2, knight f6. So that's fun. You've seen that b5 move a couple games, and it's an expansion idea that doesn't score well for black, because, like, black doesn't play it often and doesn't understand it, I think. It looks playable, but you, know, you have to play all the engine moves. It gains space, where normally you'd be at a space deficit, so yeah. There's a lot of good reasons to play it. It just looks very difficult to play. Um, so yeah, we got in this cascade of variations, because I was looking, can I play things other than pawn takes? But yeah, the more I look at other stuff, this is just the most sensible way about it. And now d5, as in all the other variations, but here, we just get this free and clear of any problems. Um, yeah. So, I guess if I'm facing this in tournaments and my opponent doesn't play... So, I wonder if they play d5 here and I play knight f6, if they play knight f3 here, this is what I'm really concerned about. So again, we could play b5 and end up in all that space gaining stuff. Um, I'm kind of surprised. Why is h6 not recommended? Knight c3, stopping b5. Okay. Well, we're out of the opening. We're out of, like, established book moves. I still like black here. Engine, show me what I'm missing. Pawn takes... Pawn takes. Ah, okay, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. Um, all right, fine. So this is why h6 is not showing up. Otherwise, it looked pretty reasonable. Um... So yeah, g6 is also popular. And does the engine hate this? Yeah, it does. The engine hates everything. The engine favors b5 because normally black is cramped. And white is not forcing black to be cramped anymore. And then the engine recommends d6, just consolidating this space advantage. Uh, interesting. But now the engine prefers white. Like, it recommends this with a score plus four, or four-tenths of a pawn, and then it changes its mind, and 
or it changes its evaluation. It doesn't have a mind. It just evaluates. So yeah. Hmm. So this D6 is not so great if the engine evaluation changes immediately after playing it. Um, I don't like B5. It just seems like, yeah, black wants to develop, but that doesn't seem like the right way to do it. E6. If E6 is played, database, most masters play C4. Um, knight C3 is also playable. And on takes, takes, d6, knight c3, g6, we have landed in Benoni territory, except white hasn't pushed the pawn. And without the pawn push, this is actually quite frustrating for black, so g6, yeah, all this can be ruled out. Taking on d5 is just silly, even though all the masters play it. Uh, d6, you know, note that if, like, somehow, knight c3... I was going to say if e4, e5 gets played, we're in check Benoni territory. Although, well, hang on, we're just transposing back into a Benoni, aren't we? Does all of this land in a Benoni if I play e6? Yes. Okay, and the Benoni is quite miserable. So this is why we don't play e6. d6 is playable. Um, so knight c3, g6... Wait, I just confused myself. I'm finding, like, every way to transpose into a Benoni. And then I'm hating it. And the answer is, don't get the Benoni. Okay, so that's why B5. It's because the Benoni sucks. I've played it before. It's very painful. I've played against it. It's fun to play against. <sighs> so... Yeah, the key difference between the Benko and the Benoni is that here in the Benko, you can gambit the pawn and get some activity. And this makes for a fun experience. Um, okay, that's why I'm so confused. Uh, your favorite variation that almost never been played in the Master Database is c4, e5, knight f3, e4, knight d4, knight c6, knight b5. Knight f6, knight f6, knight 5c3. Let's get that on the board, because I'm not entirely following it. I should have put it on the board for everybody's benefit anyway, but I thought I could follow it. I was wrong. Knight f3, e4, knight d4, knight c6, knight b5, knight f6. Yeah, I've actually seen this before. Knight 5c3, with the intent of going knight d5, and then knight 1c3. Yeah. Yeah, that knight f6 trip uh, trips me up a bit. But yeah, this... Um, yeah, this looks cool. Looks better for black. The English Knights Tour. I guess, yeah, if you really feel strongly opposed to playing pawn to e4, if you feel opposed to playing pawn d4, and you don't like to play pawn e3, this is one way to get your knight over there. That's pretty funny. Uh, I think there are problems with it. Like, there's weaknesses here, 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 and, here. like, everything on this side of the board is a weakness. So, like, you have that to contend with. Um, so I'm not sure which way white castles after playing this English Knights tour. But, yeah, that's pretty funny. So, yeah, I guess the point I should take away from all of this crazy analysis um, is that, like, after this... And I played pawn takes, but it's fine to play knight f6, provided that after d5 I play this immediately. Even though this isn't a Benko, this is still very playable. 
and after bishop g5 like there are differences in opinion about the right way to play this position um but yeah there's a lot of different strategies here and white could not have possibly prepared for all of them i'm not just talking about this one opponent but like any tournament opponent would have difficulty pre prepping for all this stuff so this is why in general we tend to see things like the benko um because like yeah this knight f3 is interesting in some sense um uh, i guess this even has some interest but um yes i'm prepped against this i'm prepped against d5 knight f6 if they play c4 we get a benko in earnest if they play knight c3 um I can't of uh, I can't avoid a Benoni anymore, can I? I don't know. Uh, G six. E four. D six. Knight of three. Wait, if E four is played, then I'm okay with playing Benoni, even though it's not the greatest opening ever. Um, see a knight c3 d6 is also playable but here they might not choose to play in the e4 they might do some other tricky stuff and like this i think is actually pretty good for white like if you're playing a benoni like position but not committing to e4 you don't have a target even though like everybody plays e4 that's the weakness it does stop black from playing bishop f5 but is black ever really going to play that? Um, so against knight f3, like, I guess some masters play this. Most of them lose. And against knight d2, like, this bishop's not that well placed anyway. So, if you're playing g6, well, hang on. Why is h6 not in the list? Like, if the goal is to play the bishop out, give it somewhere to go. Oh, because then there's e4. Okay, that's the move ordering trick. Nice. So I think what I've learned here is that if I'm, I'm on this side of the position, and my opponent plays this setup, um, then I think I'd prefer knight f3 here. Uh, the database suggests e6, e4. So this is check Benoni territory. If they, well, it's not, because I c4 has not been played. Um, some alternating between the engine suggestion and the database suggestion to see, like, what might an opponent do um, and what have experienced players responded with. Yeah, so this looks pretty good for white on account of this, like, yeah. So if my opponent plays c5 on move 1, I could opt for, yeah, what the database suggestion is. And then on D, knight f6, the engine recommended c4. Um, I think knight c3 is interesting. It avoids the Benko altogether. It could lead to a lot of interesting games. Uh, Lamelor did a lecture for St. Louis Chess Club where he said if d4 or knight f6 is more flexible than c5, and if you intend to go into these lines, play knight f6 first. Uh, yeah. Okay, point taken. Yeah. Uh, well, he's a master, so he's probably right. Yeah. So this, like... Uh, this puts a monkey wrench in all the above analysis. So, yeah, this kind of compels white to choose, are they going to play knight c3 or c4? And if they play knight c3, maybe you don't play this. Because, like, this is no good. 
So yeah, move ordering wise, this has an advantage that like I get to see what they're doing on the C file. Uh, white could keep things flexible with knight f3. And at this point, yeah, g6 also keeps things flexible. g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castle, castle, d6. So yeah, at this point, black has to decide on something, and since white's already castled, c5 is no longer in the air. But yeah, this seems like a good alternative, um, especially in light of the game we just played and the post-game analysis we just had here. Yeah, I should play, if I'm intending to play these systems, even the Benko, I should play knight f6 first. So yeah, it's funny. We had just this nice casual 10 minute game. I think I did bookmark this. I'm not sure why Leechess thinks otherwise. But um, we had this nice casual 10 minute game with five sticker increment, and a lot of ideas came out of it. Um, yeah, and this, like, even exposed that um, I had thought about other things. I hadn't thought enough about this. And this actually forces me to reconsider the first move of the game. So. I think I gotta agree with the Llama Lord that um, this is the way to go. So you can learn from your own games, even your wins. In some way, playing a game or analyzing a lost game shows that your opponent had more ideas than you did. Um, but in other ways, like you can analyze your won games and be ruthlessly critical of them. <laughs> So if you're playing like one minute chess, you're probably not going to learn very much from analyzing the game afterward. But yeah, here we had a good competitive game um, against Shogi Harbor. And uh, yeah, it was exciting. Uh, we learned a lot. It was good analysis we had together here. So um, yeah, I'm probably going to have some breakfast or something and maybe come back and play some Sume Shogi or Shogi or maybe even a Steam game or something. We'll see. Uh, yeah, it's been a fun analysis, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.